Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's session. My name is Arnaud. Hello Laurent. Hello Arnaud, good to meet you again. Good to be with you. Today is the March 2022 update on the CAF Terraform uh, landing zone. So uh, a month uh, of March which is packed with, uh, with updates. So let's get into the core of it. First thing, platform, starter, repo, what does it mean? So in this release, uh, Arnaud, we've been uh, focusing on uh, trying to simplify the way you can uh, configure uh, your private repository to, to get uh, your platform ready. So the platform uh, is the enterprise scale implementation using the CAF Terraform landing zone. As you know, we are following a leveled approach, so different levels, level 0, 1, 2, and 3 to build the platform. And in this uh, release, we are uh, introducing a, a landing zone uh, platform starter. And this platform starter uh, is meant to be able to simplify the way you are going to configure uh, everything. So that comes with uh, something called Rover Ignite. So starting the environment. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, this analogy that we are using on, uh, on the space, uh, the, the rover um, yeah, th that will bring you the launch pad and that you need to ignite. Okay, if you want to get started, you need to ignite uh, the machine. And, uh, and, and that, that's the, 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 uh, the, the, the process we are calling that uh, the rover ignite. I'm going to, to do a show and tell shortly. All right, and a couple of core uh, updates. So if you look at uh, the Terraform version, we're running into the March 2022. Uh, this is built on uh, Terraform 1.1.6 1 .1, uh, uh, and uh, retiring support for 0.13 and 0.14 because honestly, they've been out uh, quite uh, quite a long time and there's been many, many improvements in the 1.1.x. 1, 1 we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But for now, uh, we're still in, let's say, uh, usual feature mode, but it's just that we move to 1.1.6 in order to be able to uh, unlock some of the features for the next releases. As we know, we are releasing as well uh, um, the support for enterprise scale, so enterprise scale module version 1.1.x. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, Arnaud. So we, so we had originally on the previous version the 1.1.1, and with the March release, we are introducing the 1.1.3, so you can opt in for that upgrade. Uh, which is now yeah, fully compatible, so you get all the the, the latest um, yeah, public module available um, yeah, in this uh, release. Very nice. Uh, one thing uh, that we are starting to uncover, which is the subscription vending machine. So if we can uh, talk a little bit about that, it's pretty much adding at uh, level 3 the capability to install all uh, the things you need for the workloads to, to land. So uh, the subscription creation, if you have an EA or MCA, uh, all uh, the basically a requirement in terms of uh, RBAC before you, uh, let's say, hand over uh, the subscription to the, the guys in level four, right? Yeah, it's part of the subscription the democratization that we got in enterprise scale. As you know, the, you know, the guidance now is to, to really, uh, uh, per type of workload, you are going to create a new subscription. And uh, the vending machine is the process that you can use to be able to automate uh, the provisioning of uh, this subscription, making sure it's going to be attached to the relevant management group ID and deploy as well the base services uh, that you want in the landing zone. And then you can hand over that to the level four where um, um, a service team, a project team can use it uh, to deploy their own application or uh, also to, to deploy their own infrastructure as code if you give them uh, the privilege to extend uh, the landing zone. So that's really the process. We're going to talk more uh, as well in this uh, release. All right, a couple of uh, stuff that are packed into the module uh, 554 that we are, are doing, which is a lot of improvement in terms of the uh, composition and the, the life cycle, uh, and a lot of improvement with the regression testing pipelines that we introduced, but that's more if you are looking into the details of the module engineering. Overall, uh, we have improved as well the support for Terraform Cloud and Enterprise. Now you can just run any uh, like level four landing zone and specify just a dash TFC. Uh, and it will just use the TFC uh, authenticated context and TFE authenticated context to store the state inside uh, the, the TFE uh, um, basically environment that you specified. Uh, all the docs inside the document website 
which actually, Laurent, is also a new feature for this, uh, this month, right? Yeah, absolutely. I will do a, a brief um, presentation uh, later, on. But yeah, we are very pleased to announce that uh, now we've got um, we got a public uh, website, um, uh, and this public website uh, is based on um, uh, a Docusaurus, which is an open source um, uh, yeah, documentation uh, website. So meaning that you can submit pull requests. Uh, it will enable the, the collaboration that we that we need on this project. And uh, yeah, very, very pleased to, to see this release coming as well. We also added uh, the support for um, ARM64. So uh, that was requested by the community, you know, with the release of uh, Apple M1 CPU. So now you can use the rover on, uh, on an M1 CPU uh, with the native uh, capabilities, meaning that the build as well, uh, we, we, we refactored our build process uh, to make it more, um, more scalable using a build dex. Uh, yeah, a lot of things not visible, but yeah, this is what has uh, been keeping us uh, busy in the re uh, recent months. All right. So, as you know, we love talking, but we love a uh, demo as well. So maybe, Laurent, you can show us uh, this uh, onboarding uh, flow with uh, the starter project and with Rover Ignite. Yeah, absolutely. So what you can see on my screen is the documentation website. Um, this is the aztfmod.github.io slash documentation. So we put uh, the detailed links uh, at the end of this uh, video. But now when you arrive here, you get um, yeah, the, all the documentation that you were looking for. So it's only on, on one website. Uh, you got uh, the introduction if you are new to the framework and you want to understand. So you can really uh, yeah, go through those different uh, sections. Uh, you got also the fundamentals. We're explaining the levels, uh, the the, uh, the hierarchy model that we are using in the framework. So I'm not going to show you everything, but just be aware that uh, that's what we are um, documenting here in the introduction to 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 the CAF rover. So why do we, why why do we need the rover? Uh, it's to drive some consistency and making sure that we can really manage the roll-up upgrade uh, on a monthly basis. So the in order to get started, we are going to follow this um, uh, enterprise scale um, uh, section. So I'm going to minimize the, the other one. And when you get started with uh, the enterprise scale, uh, we are going to explain briefly what, it, what we mean by that. So we're going to build the platform and I'm going to show you how you can build your platform. And in another video, we are going to record and show you how you can create your own landing zone and deploy what we call a landing zone solution accelerator. So that will be a, a template for a data platform as an example that you can deploy in your landing zone. So if I click on next, you will see that the first step when you get started is to set up your organization. So your organization describe yeah, who you are. So I'm going to show you uh, yeah, how to do the, what is in this video. So the first step is to go to uh, the, the starter repository. You've got a hyperlink uh, here available. And when you click on this link, you are going to land on this uh, website. So this is the Azure CAF Terraform Landing Zone Platform Starter. You take the latest version. You see I'm here on the home page and you click on use this template. When you click use this template, so you will arrive to uh, your own uh, private uh, organization. So uh, for instance, I'm going to use my own one. And then you need to give um, a repository name. So I propose to create a private repo called Contoso March Release. Be aware, this is where I'm going to store my private configuration. So I don't want that to be public at all. You click on create repository from template. Okay, we are done. And you can see I am now in my private repo. You can see the lock just here and generate it from the starter template. So this starter template doesn't include a lot of things. It's just a, a starter generator. It's going to redirect you to the documentation. So maybe the best way to, uh, to, to proceed is to go back to our public documentation. In the public documentation, you can see that you got as a next step two ways to be able to progress. So from now, we documented the locally version. So with the, the, the VS code, we got code space. And very soon, you will get also uh, some pipeline uh, available. I'm going to use the code space because it's, um, it's the fastest way for me to be able to spin up my environment. 
And if I scroll a little bit, you will see that I will have to go to the code section, code space, and then create a new code space. And I should be able to see something similar to, to that. Okay, and get my environment ready. So I go back here to my repo, click on the code, go to the code space, and I create a new code space. So what the code space is doing is going to, um, to connect to my private repository that I just created, and it's going to pick up automatically the rover. You see, this is one of the benefits of having the rover container, because it doesn't matter if you are on code space, on a Mac on the, with a Docker desktop, I'm using a Rancher desktop, Arnaud is using Docker desktop, um, some colleagues are on Windows, you know, Wherever you are, it doesn't matter because the same container will be picked up. And depending on your architecture, and we mentioned the, the ARM64 support, so it's going to adjust that automatically. But later on, when you are also in a CI CD environment in your pipeline, uh, the same pipeline, the same self-hosted agents, if you use an SCI, con SCI container, if you are using a Kubernetes cluster, will pick up exactly the same container. You can click on view log if you want to understand what is being done, but you can see it's basically behind the scene a Docker Compose. So this image is roughly, um, yeah, and, uh, uh, it's quite big huh, because it contains uh, all the tooling. So we got the Azure CLI, we got the Terraform, and we got additional tools that we are using, like for example, Paul TerraTest. So you got the Golang SDK, so you got Ansible, um, all the different tools we need for uh, our SRE toolkit. We like to call that our uh, yeah, SRE toolkit. Um, once it's been pulled, the next uh, run will be super fast because then it will be cached. Okay, now you can see the container has been built. So now it's going to connect to, my, to the container and open uh, VS Code, but in, uh, in my uh, edge. Um, yeah. Okay, let me zoom a bit for you. Easier to see. Okay, maybe one more time. Okay, so when you start uh, VS Code, you are going to, to see the file explorer, which is exactly the representation of the template repo. You see, the, the one you, you see on the, the private repo will be loaded automatically in the explorer, and you got a terminal, which is on the, the main branch. So I'm going to close the readme and go back to the public documentation. Okay, so yeah, this is where we are. So now the next step is to clone the CAF Terraform landing zone. In this repository, uh, what we've got is just a template. You see, there's no Terraform anywhere. So if you explore that, there's no code. So you need to bring the, the base foundation code of the CAF Terraform landing zone. And this is coming from this command. So you have to clone this CAF Terraform landing zone Git repository into the landing zone folder. We put a caution here to make sure that do not use another name as landing zone because it's a convention we are using everywhere. You know, this framework is opinionated. The purpose of being opinionated is because we are driving more consistency across uh, the, the different uh, implementation. And by doing that, it will be easier to support each other in the community. So I do my clone. I come back to the documentation. So I've done, so I need to go in this folder, CD landing zone, and I need to switch to a specific branch. You see this branch uh, is the release. So 22 for 20, uh, 2022, the year, and 03 for March. If we do more than one release in March, you will get dot one, dot two. We go back here, CD landing zone, and then git checkout. So this checkout, it's not a branch, actually, it is a tag. So this is why you see that uh, very specific uh, Git uh, output uh, with the, uh, the checksum of uh, the commit. This is absolutely normal, okay? Just be aware of that, um, then you come back. But the purpose of the branch is to make sure that we are all using the same and it's not going to change. Okay, so right oh, now no. we have our environment uh, ready, we're ready to somehow start to deploy things, right? Absolutely, Arnaud. So now we got the code. I click on the next button, you see, at the, on this tutorial, 
and you can see we got different scenarios, so different deployment mode. So the first one will be on a single subscription. This is more for the lab. This is the one I'm going to use today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got an MSDN subscription. You must be global administrator. You must uh, have uh, at least one subscription where you are owner. The reason for that is because enterprise scale requires some high elevated privilege and will cover additional scenario in the future. If, for example, you want to deploy that and uh, um, a directory team give you a service principle to be able to deploy enterprise scale, this is also possible, but that will be an additional scenario that will cover. The next one we, go, we are going to cover will be the multi-subscription deployment that you can reuse. And the last one will, will show you how you can also create automatically brand new subscriptions. So I go to the getting started. Uh, just review one more time, okay, all uh, the, uh, the privilege. And you can see the first step will be to log in to Azure. So the way you do that, you click on the Rover login. Let's go back here. Rover login. Uh, what you can do as well with the Rover login, you can add a tenant because in my specific scenario, um, I work with a lot of different uh, tenants at Microsoft. So I'm going to speed up the, the login to put my uh, uh, tenant name. So Terraform Dev dot on Microsoft Microsoft dot com. Nope. Almost. <laughs> Yes, little typo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the device login scenario. So I'm going to copy uh, the code, then control click on the URL. You should be able to see a new tab open. And then you pick and choose your credential. I'm going to select this one, validate, and I can close it. Okay, so back to my terminal, just wait. So okay. basically, you're gonna have to log in so we get some information from your logged in subscription and environment, right? Yeah, absolutely, Arnaud. And um, what, what you have to do as well, uh, when you are deploying that on your MSDN subscription, so let's say if you got more than one subscription, you will have to make sure that you pick and choose the right uh, subscription because the subscription that you've got here is the one that is going to be used for uh, the deployment of uh, the enterprise scale. So if you need to switch to a different subscription, uh, you can do an easy account uh, set dash S for the subscription, and then you put uh, the GUID of the subscription or the name of the subscription if you don't have uh, duplicate names. I'm going to keep this one for, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the tutorial. So that's where we are. Uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and the next step will be to create the template definition for your work environment because now we've got the code but we don't have uh, the we don't have uh, the, the template generated. So I'm going to copy that command and from uh, and from the, the, the terminal here execute uh, the, the specific uh, the specific uh, command. Yep. All right. So, so this is the text it. version of uh, of a wizard, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So you can put conto so conto uh, uh, so march, for example. Mm -hmm. Give a name. What will be the calf environment? The calf environment is a variable uh, used to identify um, the, the calf terraform. Uh, technically, you can have multiple calf terraform if you want. Uh, uh, it's very useful for la larger partner or larger uh, customer who have different teams and they want to prototype in their isolation. So either you got a different subscription. So I'm going to, to call it um, yeah, CAF uh, 022 or 3. Okay, so that will be my tag. Mm -hmm. uh, I can put a prefix here as well. So I'm going to keep uh, CAF from now. Uh, this is the management group prefix that you need to, to set up. So let's call it uh, COINT uh, uh, 03 something like that, and then conto so uh, March 2023. There's an email address, so, so where do you want to send the, the, the alert? I'm going to keep this one uh, from now. And the next step in the wizard is to, um, to define where to put the regions. 
So as you can see, the structure uh, is a bit uh, specific. So you need to be able to, uh, to specify a format like this one. Uh, if you need to, um, to tweak that, my recommendation is copy that value, open here a new file like that, then you select and then you can tweak, okay? Because it has to be like that. So if you want to change, let's say, region two to uh, uh, North uh, Europe, you can do it uh, like that. It has to be the lower case. You see no space. So make sure that you put the right value of the region. If you want to bring another region, you just call it uh, as well uh, region three, and then you can put uh, an additional value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's for the customization. Yep. I'm going to keep the default. So then when you specify a list of regions where you want to, to deploy your service, or this one will be used by Enterprise Scale for the data residency uh, constraints, you can also specify which one will be the default. You know, but there's a lot of concept of default location, or if you don't specify uh, the location, it's going to pick up this one. So I'm going to keep the, the region one. You okay. click enter. And the magic happens. So right now, uh, we're going to just get a couple of answers and this will create the YAML file for what we call the definitions, right? So we're not yet on the Terraform uh, land, we're still on the, on the YAML. And this is still part of the, the Rover Ignite uh, process. Absolutely, Arnaud. So this template is bringing uh, yeah, a lot of examples on uh, yeah, what you should do. So before I click to the getting started, I want to show you here on the left hand side what we have created. So we have created a folder structure like this one, where you got different uh, variables, you know, uh, for example, the private DNA zone uh, is an example. You can, you see, configure that. Uh, those ones are what we call the regional zones, so very specific. So this is for private endpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be deployed. If you go to the TF state, what you can see here is the definition of all the state. The reason why we call it the definition, because you may not be, maybe you want to tweak some bits and pieces, like for example, the file name, you've got naming convention, and you want to apply also to the name, some specific naming convention, you can do that. You want to tweak uh, the, the deployment, you will be able to come later, you see in this file, or you want to add a new region, you know? So you can really use that as a definition of your platform, defining which branch you are going to use. Maybe in a month you come back to here and you say 2204, and that's how you are going to upgrade. So this file is really the, the master uh, metadata. It's going to define which subscription you want to reuse, you see, and it's picked up automatically my logged in subscription. Okay, so the, the Rover Ignite has been doing that for me. But behind the scene, uh, you will learn yeah, the, the structure and you will see that the deployment of the platform will start like that on the region one. I'm not deploying on region two anything from the platform yet. Uh, and then I've got those scale out domains, which are the, the dimensions. So per region, I can have also the concept of uh, yeah, environment like prod, non-prod, SIT, DR. Okay. So if you don't want some services, you can just comment like that. And that's going to skip uh, the, the generation of the configuration. Okay, so just to summarize here, what we're doing to do is the, the definition is really a, a one-stop uh, shop to, to ignite your configuration, hence the name. And it's really to have a simple configuration file that will define the things that you will find uh, everywhere. because. What we've seen is that very often uh, when, when we are creating the TFR files for a complex environment, it's really hard to be consistent across a different environment. So if I rephrase a little bit uh, on, on what you just explained, the, the purpose of the Rover Ignite is to help you getting started and generating a complex environment and be consistent for you because the Ignite will be consistent for you. Absolutely, Arnaud. And also to be able to manage the life cycle. So don't forget that it's not just a one-off. Today, we are going to start very small. Uh, you can see in enterprise scale in my Azure landing zone. So I've got a, yeah, a library folder. I've got some uh, maybe policy. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's empty. But if in the future you want to add additional specific uh, yeah, private implementation of the policy, you will be able to come here and to copy mm -hmm. your private uh, definition. And that's how you will be able to then regenerate your configuration. If you come here, 
you will find the different services, for example, the, the V1, the V Hub. Uh, you can come on the template here and you can change, you see the name. You don't want to call that prod, you want to change that, you will be able to, um, to adjust. It's like uh, the definition, the, the CIDR block as well may not be the one you want to use. So what you can do, you can see all the, the prefix that have been used so far by the different uh, services and you can tweak. You just come back here to the getting started and then you execute uh, the command to, uh, that are here to be able to, um, uh, to regenerate your configuration. Okay, so let's generate the configuration then. All right, so I'm now on the getting started. If you want to open the preview to have a better visibility. So here we are explaining yeah, the, the different steps of Ignite uh, of the platform. So the goal now will be to create the configuration file. I'm already logged in, but you can see the documentation has been updated with my tenant name, including the subscription where I am connected. It's just because in the future, when you have to come back, if you need to do some troubleshooting from the, the code space or your VS code, you will have to log in to those specific one. So the first command to execute will be this one. It's an Ansible template that will pick up my Ignite YAML that I showed you before. And you press enter here. So this file will execute uh, because that's the first time it's going to make some check as well. Uh, it's going to check if you, you see there's a bit of uh, red errors because we don't have any launch, but nothing has been deplo uh, deployed already. So this rover ignite uh, process will try to identify where are you in the bootstrapping process. Do you have the launch pad? Do you have the credentials? Do, uh, the, um, um, is there anything new that I need to change? So it's going to, um, uh, to, um, to parse all the different configuration files and generate for us uh, a new folder that will contain all the information we need with the configuration. So you see, I've got my platform definition. And if I come here, you will find that gradually it's going to build for me the configuration on a level per level basis. Okay, okay. so that looks more like uh, TFRs. So now we clearly see the things we used to see. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. So if I so look if I at my, yeah, let's open just maybe one TFRs. Yeah, so if I come here on the uh, Azure AD groups, you can see, so this uh, Azure AD groups uh, will um, describe the list of all the groups uh, that will be created. Uh, there's some also specific uh, object ID that have been populated, which is the, the bootstrap uh, user uh, that we need on the framework. I can see some um, uh, group for identity, management, connectivity, the subscription creation, platform. This is to create the subscription at the platform level. This is for the landing zone. So different groups, uh, very similar to what um, you've been using with the, 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 the CAF framework. If I go to the storage account, again, I will be able to find my level zero, different uh, yeah, ver blob versioning has been enabled, container. And you see the, the CAF environment that I've been using and typing on the wizard at the beginning is, is populated automatically. So the goal here is to make it simpler for you to start instead of trying to find and replace and the previous version that we, uh, we had was a bit uh, complex. So we try to simplify the way you uh, bootstrap your platform. All right, and as we mentioned, uh, what really we want to give with that is uh, the choice to, 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 to customers, partners, consultants using that is either you're fully familiar, proactive, very good at, uh, at uh, TFRs, and you can continue your, lo your life in the TFR worlds like this and, and unreaching, or you can keep on using uh, the, the, the features of the Rover Ignite and go back to the YAML and, and use the YAML to regenerate and refresh the, the settings as you change them, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Don't think that you have to use the Rover Ignite, but it's good when you are learning the platform or you can also drive the life cycle from Ignite to configuration to deployment, okay? so. Yep, and, and as well, something I want to add because it, it might create uh, confusion as well. But if you remember the previous uh, uh, things that we that we had, so the previous uh, starter, really the purpose with this platform starter is to decommission the previous starter, which was very, let's say, manual, where you have to do Control F, replace Contoso by the name of my company. And it was very uh, troublesome, cumbersome. Uh, it didn't really show you the possibility to add uh, the uh, the group and really 
customize the environment. This is why we created this Ignite to, to make sure that you create highly personalized and then reproducible complex environment because that's for complex uh, uh, situations that we're using out of that. Yeah, absolutely. And you see documentation is also updated, telling me uh, which subscription I need to log into, uh, uh, with which user. I'm on a single user, so you don't see uh, the group membership here. But that's going to, to remind you all the different steps. So if I go to the readme of the launchpad to deploy uh, the, the launchpad, the first step will be to, to go to this uh, readme. And you got this prerequisite that you need to execute. So you need to make sure that you elevate uh, the, the current user to what we call the tenant root. Tenant root is required to deploy enterprise scale. And it's a very simple command that you, you need to execute. This why you need to be global admin to make sure that you, you become a root tenant uh, admin. The next step will be to uh, execute those different steps. We've done it, you see, and we, we are not changing to a different branch, but uh, uh, if in the future you, you go to 2204, don't forget that you need to, to make sure that you match the right branch because this is the versioning of the code that we are using. The first command is the, this rover command that will call uh, this uh, starter folder called CAF launchpad. We can, uh, we can explore that later, and I'm giving the var folder, which is all the TFR uh, that you see here on the left-hand side, and it's going to pick up for me the tenant name and um, uh, yeah, the subscription, all of that. Okay, so just copy that command, and let's get started with the plan for the launchpad. Okay, so when you run the rover, uh, you see few bit and pieces here. So first of all, a rover will extrapolate and identify all the var files that you are using. It's going to try to identify if you got a launchpad, and you can see here it's telling you there is no launchpad, which is expected, uh, so which is good. It's going to remind you which user that is uh, that, uh, that, that that is currently connected for the deployment. We put the object ID. All of that is really for troubleshooting purposes. You see making sure that you are owner of the subscription. And apparently that's the case. You see, this user is owner. Then we make sure that you are using uh, the, the right version of um, uh, Terraform, load the different dependencies, and then we got uh, the Terraform plan that is going to be um, executed. So it's going to tell you here, running Terraform plan with all those different commands. And then you have to pass to your uh, plan for potentially inspection if you want to do like uh, in inspection of the plan uh, and, uh, and security inspection, compliance inspection, for instance, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we, we give you the, 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 the pass where the plan is uh, accessible. Okay, so you can see there's a copy uh, of the plan. Previously, it was a, there's a temporary uh, folder. So this is very helpful if you need to, in pipeline, to upload uh, the plan, as I'm always saying. So here, I'm not going to, to show you everything, but uh, this is the, the Terraform resource that are going to be uh, created. This is really a critical section. You need to get this one done. Uh, our recommendation is generate the launchpad from the VS code because we've seen some customer scenario where sometimes it's failing because lack of permissions. And if you bootstrap the launchpad from a pipeline and um, you can't get access to the TF state because you see the TF state is local in this uh, rover container. So you need to, to make sure that you, um, you do that in an interactive mode just to be able to recover from any failures. Yep. Next step, yep. next step is to execute the apply using going back to the readme and I'm going to apply um, the plan. See this plan that we just uh, created uh, will be uh, will be deployed. So the calculation is already done so the apply should be extremely fast, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, anyway, we're not going to see it through the end, but you see the beginning here, creating the name, the resource group and the storage account. So really cool. So you, you, you get the point. Ignite is really for you to get started, create a complete stack of uh, configuration file. 
and uh, then um, you, you you really do whatever you want, whatever you want to um, to achieve. And again, the purpose is to replace uh, the the legacy, uh, let's say, uh, starter or samples that we published previously. So you're able to really create starter that are relevant to your environment and your configuration. So, Rover Ignite, you understand uh, that's uh, something we want to continue to explore and uh, we discussed that mono subscription is available in this release and we're going to add uh, pipelines to, uh, to do this uh, deployment completely using uh, GitHub Action in the next uh, release cycle. Same thing in the next couple of uh, weeks, we're going to release the multi-subscription for reusing one, um, reusing subscriptions that were created previously. And those subscriptions, by the way, can be multi-channel. You can have some of them from a CSP, some of them from an MSDN, some of them from uh, from an EA or MCA. The only thing that matters is that they are trusting the same um, Azure Active Directory. And then you have multi-subscription based on the EA or MCA that will come again in a couple more weeks. And uh, we will put the pipeline that goes uh, with that and, uh, and the pipeline uh, worker nodes or runners uh, going uh, along with that. So that's one part of the plan, but there's a lot of things as well in uh, the cooking uh, now, uh, Laurent. So now uh, we, are, we, we are using Terraform 1.1.x. Uh, we are going to enforce that and migrate uh, everything uh, to be forced to 1.1.x in the next uh, major release of the module for one particular reason, which is linked to reason number two. Uh, and this is actually to accelerate uh, the, the plan uh, in a non-destructive way. So basically we found many uh, uh, optimization at plan time. And in order to maintain the, the upgrade pass, we're gonna use a new feature of Terraform 1.1, which is called the, the, the move block. So we're gonna say that, okay, this resource has moved to this other resource and that allows the graph to map things that programmatically in the module have changed uh, location but then it allows to uh, remap those things into the into the graph and into the state so that allows actually a smooth transition when you deploy things like the vm vm extension and and so on and in this release in the 5.6.0 we will be using also uh, azure rm 2.98 or 99 uh, and uh, that uh, are supposed to be the last one from the two uh, series before we jump to Azure RM 3.x. As you mentioned, there will be iterations on the, uh, the Rover Ignite uh, features to add more stuff, add more pipeline and add more DevOps runner platform. So we want to slipstream the creation of runners with um, container instances, ACI, and also uh, running things on uh, AKS, on Azure Kubernetes uh, services. And we're going to publish uh, that as well in the next few weeks. More docs, for sure, uh, more videos as well. And one thing uh, that is uh, as well very, very much appreciated is your contribution. So wherever you are, uh, we appreciate uh, all the PRs we get every day. Uh, and really that's what makes uh, this thing stronger is the community and all the smart brains uh, that are contributing and adding uh, things in the community. Uh, and a great uh, point uh, for chatting uh, is the ZTF mode uh, community on, um, on, on Gitter with more than 200 uh, super active members. And uh, thank you for that. And uh, keep on uh, contributing whichever way, creating issues, creating um, PR, pull request on whichever part of the framework and helping the community on Gitter. That's really, um, really for us uh, important and as well getting your, your feedbacks on what we're doing is really fundamental for us because ultimately this is for you this is for everyone this is not just for uh, for us uh, what we're building here so that's what's in the baking and probably some more thing will happen probably something will slide that's the life of an IT project isn't it <laughs> one place one stop to go for all the docs, Laurent, as you mentioned. Uh, we realized that there was really a lot of things everywhere in the different repos. So one of the things we mentioned is centralizing everything into this uh, one uh, stop uh, uh, place, one stop shop, aka.ms slash calf slash terraform. And uh, yeah, that will be 
a massive amount of stuff that we are going to add progressively. And as Laurent mentioned, this is as well uh, reachable uh, via uh, GitHub pull request. So your contribution is more than welcome to all of that. Anything I missed, Laurent? Yeah, no, I wanted to add Arnaud also on the, on the work coming in the next release. So we're going also to upgrade the Azure AD provider. So to transition from the Active Directory graph to uh, the, the Microsoft graph. Uh, as you know, Active Directory graph is being sunset uh, in June. So you cannot create a service principle anymore from the portal, but you can do it programmatically still. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in order to prepare for this um, uh, uh, major upgrade, so there's also some work that we are doing at the moment for, for the next release. Thanks, Laurent, for the Easter egg uh, and for the announcement for the people that follow this video till the very end. <laughs> If you, if you can just come back to, to my demonstration screen, I want to show to the community um, yeah, the launchpad that has been completed. Yeah, and uh, what you can see, uh, apply complete. Uh, and uh, this is the, the critical section that you, you should be able to see, moving the launchpad to the cloud. This is very important because this is uh, how you know that um, uh, yeah, now you are on the remote state management, so you are not on the local rover anymore. So meaning that if I come back to my previous command, like the rover plan, uh, and uh, I want to show you very briefly, now the launchpad will identify automatically that it's been already deployed. You see, so uh, this command will tell you here, launchpad already installed. So this is really what you need to achieve on the initial step. Um, then don't forget, there is uh, also uh, the readme uh, telling you uh, very important stuff. You need to log out just because um, yeah, you are, um, uh, you are um, uh, uh, running into different uh, permissions. You see, this is why you get the, the error here. You need to log out and log in again to make sure that your um, Azure session get the group membership because everything is based on group membership. And if you are not doing the, the logout, you will end up with the permission issues like that because you don't have, um, yeah, you, you don't have access. So just be aware of that follow the instruction one by one, make sure that you re-execute one more time the, the Ansible Rover Ignite here, and then you move to the next step, which is deploying your credentials. And you will get one more time the Ansible playbook to do, and after that, that will be finished, okay? And then you will go to the subscriptions, you will execute that command, then you will go to the management, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then identity and enterprise scale. Okay, you can see here enterprise scale is not uh, generated here. That's coming gradually because this is really a workflow process that we are implementing and we need some information that don't exist yet. So we need first to deploy identity management and then uh, enterprise scale will be available to you. You see, it's like a marvel. You have to stay till the end because there's always a little bit more. Always some nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining and uh, looking forward to our next uh, release call uh, next month. And uh, in the meantime, feel free to reach out and uh, looking forward to your guys' contribution. Thank you very much.